Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Chris Neosi. I am the creator, animator, writer, head honcho, blah blah blah, you know all this crap already. Of Tone Trade of Magical Expertise, I'm also the voice of uh, Zeto, Net King number 7, in this particular episode. And I'm happy to say, uh, fitting in between their very busy schedules, I'm joined by two other Net Kings. Uh, would you guys like to uh, introduce yourselves? Certainly. Uh, my name is Kyle Abair, and I voice Webmaster. Hello, this is Michelle Knotts, and I'm the voice of Kinder Spirit. Yes. So we have Net Kings one, three, and seven. Those are those are some good uh, some good odd numbers in there, I believe. Uh, um, so this is the <laughs> this is episode zero, uh, file zero, or as I also like to call it, the uh, tragic backstory episode. <laughs> um, and here we have Kyle to start us out with. Popping in. That's cool. Um, I feel important here because if I'm yes. starting something, I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> well, you did. You you certainly did finish the show too. I mean, <laughs> in a couple episodes from now, but um, so this is. Uh, I've been saying on other commentaries, like there were a lot of moments and and parts of episodes I was really looking forward to animating from the beginning. This whole episode is something I was very much looking forward to doing the entirety of from day one because. I have the basic outline of what I wanted. This is kind of the uh, the, the lore, I guess, of the um, the Tome game world itself, and how um, you know Softy, this this little uh, living artificial intelligence character, um, you know, came to be. And, and I remember uh, script supervisor Liz Losey, who is often very critical, as you can tell from from past commentary she's been on. Uh, took a look at the outline and was like, this is great. And I was like, oh, thank God I'm doing something right. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I'm really proud of how it turned out. Um, we tried a lot of new, different things. We had a lot of really amazing uh, – well, I mean, we always have the, the usual staff on board, but they got to do a lot of new stuff on this one in particular um, that uh, I think turned out really well. We really tried to push ourselves with making each episode successively better and better. And this one was very, very special – uh, and that it was answering a lot of questions, yeah, and we we were thinking about putting it. In fact, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember because it's, it's been it's been over a year since all of us recorded, or at least you two have recorded for this. I'm trying to remember if we recorded this episode before the rest of season two. I don't know if you guys remember if we did this first. But I thought we did it after. It might have been, yeah. Okay. And, and I, I am just plain senile. I just like it's all a blur. This is a first world problem for a, a working voice actor. It's just like I don't remember when I did what. What did I sound like? Where am I? Who are you again? <laughs> what am I? Yeah, who? Are, yeah. I like, oh, did, did I agree to do this? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even, who are you? What is this project? <laughs> Um, I guess actually on that same note, um, so we're telling a little interesting story. So I, I think, I, and I might have told bits and pieces of this on other commentaries, but just to, it's interesting, hopefully. Um, so the uh, the opening narration of the very first episode of Tome, uh, well, like introducing everything, was originally meant to be Webmaster, and I actually had a small audition. I don't think I told you this, Kyle, but I had a small audition for a few other folks to read for the part of Webmaster to do it. I wasn't really finding anything that I was totally happy with. And then I decided, wait a minute, because I knew about this whole setup and how Kinder Spirit is the head of the sound department. Uh, so I thought, wait, it would make more sense for her to be the system voice, if anything. So I went to Michelle because uh, I was like, I, there's no other better person, better fit for who is eventually going to turn out to be Kinder Spirit uh, than Michelle. Because she just, as you can tell from that little giggle you just heard, she just literally is this character. Her spirit is very kind. <laughs> It's me. But 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 Michelle, which which of you is derpier? Are you derpier than Kinder Spirit, or is Kinder Spirit derpier than you? I think Kinder Spirit's a little bit derpier than I am. I mean, well, she she is part programmer, and you have to be pretty you have to be pretty on the ball to be a programmer, from what I hear. But, well, no. But you but you spend years of your life editing audiobooks, and that takes patience. I, I, so, yeah. I mean, like you have been for the last like. Every time I check in with you lately, it's like, I'm still working on this 700 year long audio book between Pokemon episodes. <laughs> um, I do have some computer knowledge, thank God. not a lot, but yes. some. Well, you do have sound knowledge, so I guess that is that is fitting. Although all of us, thankfully, do. That's for voiceover stuff. But um, but anyway, yeah. So we went with the Kinder Spirit, and then uh, later, uh, Webmaster makes his first actual appearance in the show. Uh, in episode eight mm -hmm. for the uh, Gemini tournament, right. and I remember Kyle. We were at a Buffalo Wild Wings with because <laughs> that's Mack. what you do. 
go. Of course, yeah. Well, I was visiting California. It was me and Devin Mack, Edward Bosco, Kira Buckland, and you and me. And and me, again. Uh, and I think at that point I decided, you know what? I think I think, uh, I think I want to go with Kyle for Webmaster. And so I drew a little picture of him. And then uh, a year later, when I think episode four... Five was coming out, so this would have been like 2012, ages ago. I remember it was so adorable. You sent me a PM over Twitter when the new episode came out at the time. You're like, "Hey man, did you still want me to play that character you told me about? Did you go in a different direction? Did you not want me to do it? I mean, uh, I won't take any offense." I was like, "No, Kyle, your character doesn't show up for like three more episodes." <laughs> what an actor so being nice. needy and desperate. <laughs> like, please hire well, no, me. It was, it, no, it was. I mean, because you mentioned like when you're a working actor, I'm just like, "Oh, this this guy." Who, I mean, I've known you for since what 2000. Six, I think. I don't even know. But I was like, oh, wow, this guy who is a working actor actually gives a shit about my stupid YouTube web tune. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Well, let, let, let's um, put it this way. In 2006, I definitely was not working as much. <laughs> I was like, no, I mean, that, that was in the era of, like, parody rangers. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, I mean, you, well, both of you guys really have always been kind of, like, advocates of, like, the new media world of, like, you know, the smaller indie kind of projects and stuff, which I'm very thankful for because I love getting to work with you guys. Dude, I have long said at uh, at panels, I turn into Tony Robbins sometime. It's like, follow your dream. You know, this is the new frontier. It's not like you have to go and woo a network or a major Hollywood studio anymore. You can make your own, um, you know, you can be your own Seth MacFarlane. You can be your own Matt Groening or, or what, uh, uh, Groening and, and just do your own, you know, animated world, whether it's a game or a hybrid thing or whatnot. I think it's super exciting and especially... Uh, is, is impressive to see the amount of talent that's out there that's that, that's not been scooped up by some major you know talent agency or, or management firm or or, or Hollywood studio yet. Yeah, I mean, well, that is the goal. I mean, of course, we'd all love to be you know having a real. Well, I mean, we had a budget for this. Obviously, we did the crowdfunding campaign, but I mean, this is all just like this is this is ten people and a bunch of voice actors all getting together and making a anime on YouTube. More, <laughs> but but think about that. I mean, y- y- your team, for example. They're not all in Los Angeles. They're, they're in different points of the globe. You're, you're using Skype either to direct voiceover sessions or have business meetings, in, in essence. And you know, it's not all, hey, let's, let's go over to, to, to Curb's house and, and bring this out and, or, or, or think it out. And then let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings. You know, that, that, that's just one <laughs> aspect of it. I'm really impressed to, to, to see everything, where, you know, for your composer who's probably not based in L.A. and, you know, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I mean, I was this whole episode in particular. Uh, I was really glad that I, I, I managed to get not just you guys, but also we had, of course, we had Todd Habercorn, we had Yuri Lowenthal, uh, we had um, uh, John St. John, who I've known for a long time. Like all these folks who were just like, "Yeah, this sounds like a blast," and I'm just like, "You people work on like A class." games and cartoons and shit and you're doing this and it's like and and plus also some of the th- i mean like you know because you with world of warcraft and this is a virtual game and like yuri with the dot hack connection and just you know all the kind of like personal meaningfulness behind that is, has been really great so having you guys all on board this was an honor um and uh oh this is the sad turning point for softy no don't yell at her don't you realize you're setting the entire series in motion right now. <laughs> I was going to ask if that guy was John St. John with the yes. blonde hair. Yes, indeed, yeah. yeah. Who, uh, which is funny, he was he was cast because uh, he called me on my birthday uh, to just to wish me a happy birthday, and I'm just like, John, I want to work with you. Do you want to be in my stupid YouTube cartoon? And he's just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I do, because oh, I'm the Duke. Yeah. Ooh. That's right, he doesn't even... <laughs> He doesn't even say. He's like, "Hey, I'm John St. John. How are you, Chris? Of course, I'd love to be in your stupid. He didn't call it stupid. <laughs> I love you, John. Thank you for doing my stupid cartoon." <laughs> He's got that great radio voice, and of course, anyone who knows our backgrounds, I came from radio, and I think Michelle, you said you did some radio too. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those were the good old days, right? Just being live on air and someone pants you as you're doing your break. No, maybe that didn't happen to you. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen to me either. I only heard about it. Michelle, I also remember, oh, I was going to get to your story. We were at Comic-Con in New York. This is, God, I don't remember how many years ago this was. We were at the, uh, the Street Fighter Tekken panel, which both of you guys were oh, in, yeah. of course. And I had my, uh, my really like ancient portfolio of artwork at the time. And I had this, uh, this picture of like all of the um, original TV Tome Adventures versions of the characters, the, the old like ancient version of Tome. Uh, from years ago, and you looked at that picture for all of five seconds. It had like a hundred characters on it, 
within five seconds you were like i like her she's cute and, I'm, and i just look over to you slowly and we, and i was like that's your character and you're like you're fucking with me right now and i'm like i'm absolutely not fucking with you <laughs> so so clearly you and kind of spirit were a match made in heaven like yay in, that was pretty funny in that was heaven funny. in heaven because she's an <laughs> there angel. she is no i'm freaking out yeah she I, alone. I really tried to place a lot of like suspicion like like equal amounts of suspicion on each of the net kings to really show like <laughs> you know, kind of how messed up in the head that they were and, and everything, but... Cause, and also, I think it was it, it really benefited casting uh, veterans, mainly because, like, uh, so the, the the main characters are all, were all kind of, like, younger, and you guys are much more seasoned and experienced, and having the, like, the legit age gap between the, um, the Net Kings, who are meant to be, like, you know, a, a bunch of seasoned professional game developers, and then Alpha and the others who are, like, you know, teenagers or early 20s at the oldest, uh, I think really helped to, like, kind of flavor the show better. Because, I don't know, I feel like that that's kind of lost on a lot of cartoons is having age-appropriate... Also, I'm screaming, you know, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> ben Diskin this had to hear freaky. me. <laughs> ben yeah. Diskin recorded me. I recorded his whisper room. Boy, he's the voice of Oddball, those of you don't know. And uh, he just ha- had to hear me screaming, and he was just like, are you okay? And I'm just like, Acting! <laughs> so did he have to adjust the mic levels when you did the screen the first time? It's like, sorry, you blew it out. It's distorted. No, I'm not doing it again. I'm not. You get you get two out of me. <laughs> the Dragon Ball Z can't handle this shit. No, I, I think I just uh, I think I, I knew that it was gonna blow out everything, so I just turned it all the way down. Right. Um, I want to give some shout outs real quick. Also, the uh, the the we had so many people do amazing stuff on this. Yo- uh, Yoav Landau, the Living Tombstone, scored. All of the music for this entire episode based on uh, a bunch of tracks done by uh, Weston Durant, who's been our musician since the beginning of the show. The In Real Life illustrations, which was kind of our first window into the outside world of the game uh, to show what some of these characters look like and everything, were done by our background artist, uh, Terrence Slipinski Fooley, who's been on board the show since the first episode. And this uh, monster, the, the, here's, here's one of them right here, uh, which Fooley illustrated and, and rendered beautifully. And uh, Kajit, the Shadow Guard Beast monster, was beautifully animated by uh, Jordan Lasko, who's previously been also one of our background artists, but she's an animator in her own right. She worked on the uh, Mystery Skulls uh, ghost music video, and um, she was... I did, it's so weird because I, I realized I discovered her and she was a, a fan of the old TV Tome Adventure series and drew these incredible fan art of the, the Shadow Guard Beast and also the Dragon Bug, which appears in episode 14 and, and uh, 15. And I hired her and then all these years later I have her animating uh, the, the new iterations of them and they looked amazing. And I remember we, we worked for like a solid week on getting all those shots done and... Uh, making them really nice and she put so much love into that so major major shout out to her for all the 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 care she put into that little gross ass dinosaur monster (laughs) (laughs) um so we have the origin of the the virus the forbidden power in this one um we have softy as this big kind of like anchor point for the whole story we have you know where zeta quote-unquote lost his arm which of course was more of just an aesthetic thing but he certainly felt it in person and that that sucked um it was a very dark episode yeah it, I, i'm it, it was it was really cool to do it this way it's, it's very it was so different from like everything else we had ever done on the show before because like, we were doing it this kind of like documentary style sort of setup and everything and uh but i'm really happy with it and uh of course we also had edwin tiong who uh, i've worked with for years and lots of stuff he was doing the he did the narration for this uh the, the documentary style kind of thing um while he was sick which is why he has that like grit naturally because uh, he doesn't usually sound like that he's usually like hello yes i'm edwin tiong haha i'm asian and australian and sound like neither haha um but but he <laughs> He sounded like fucking Gray Fox in this, and I'm just like, I'm just going to have you do this while you're sick, and, and it turned out really well. So, Yeah, that's a, that's a curse for voice actors. If you audition while you're sick, then you book the role, and then you can't reproduce the sound for some reason. <laughs> they just it's like, like, sorry. It's like, oh, you're, fi- you're fired, and you'll never work again. <laughs> that's right. No, never work in this town again. They'll go ahead and record you and pay you, which is nice, but then they'll just secretly just recast you, <laughs> and then the project comes out. And it's like, I thought I did that role. It's like, oh, man. Oh, I can't, I'm so excited to announce... This thing I'm in, oh, I've been replaced. Whoops. Uh, that happens also sometimes. <laughs> yeah. wah, wah. Uh, that almost happened a few times on this show, but I won't, I won't say when or where. But um, <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't. I'm, I'm actually glad, like, especially with you guys, because, again, you guys are so busy, but we managed to uh, 
we managed to keep everybody consistent throughout the entire show, and I was just glad that everyone was like, everybody was just into it. Every like, again, like like Yuri and Todd and, and and John and even Mona Marshall, who was in an earlier episode, and Bryce. Like everybody, everybody was like interested and like genuinely like, yeah, this is cool. Like I'm I'm down to do this. How much? How many uh, East Coast talent? I know we got Michelle. Uh, who else did you use? <laughs> oh God, let's see. Uh, Jesse Nowak, Mike Hex, Chris Zito. Uh, myself, obviously. It's, uh, there's a bunch. There's so many. They're, they're, they're all over the place. There's actually quite a few that are in L.A. by just kind of pure coincidence uh, as I'm here now. But um, uh, there's probably a few other ones I'm missing. I apologize if I forgot you <laughs> if you're listening to this. Blanket shout out to um, everyone who has uh, anything to do with this project. How about that? Yes, ever. All of you. I love all of you equally. Except I'm just going to say currently that I love Kyle and Michelle more because they're here and I don't want them to be here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Group hug. Did you guys did you guys have any things about your characters that you that you liked about doing them? But when we I mean we all we kinda did all of season two in one big chunk together, so I know it's all probably a blur from a year ago, but uh, anything that stuck out to you in particular from Webmaster and Kinder Spirit? Hmm. A life form. <laughs> I remember all I had to do was to, to describe to you what I was looking for was like, all right, Kyle, so imagine Gohan was the Supreme Kai and you immediately got what I meant. So that was nice. <laughs> yeah, see, Great I knew life. all my exactly. Dragon Ball uh, connections would come into handy uh, when working yes. on future projects. Uh, it's always a good thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I approach every role, no matter how big or small, if it's unnamed Soldier B or, or if it's a recurring character, I, I look at them on equal footing because, you know, I, I'm super passionate about getting to do voiceover and anything, and especially in this day and age where we can create, you know, uh, online content like this, uh, whether we're in the same city or not, we're still apart and we're on Skype, you're directing me, you're listening, you're, you're finagling a performance, and I'm getting to, to flex my muscles too. It's like, here, I'm going to throw whatever at you, and uh, we're going to take your interpretation and then, and then go from there. I just love that dynamic. I, any chance. I mean, I'm sorry to be so vague about it, but that's just my, my, my go-to response for it because anything... That, that's new and different, and this project definitely stands out from from other games or shows that I've gotten to work on, uh, and I'm just honored to be a part of it. I mean, it's just, it's just super cool to me. I was I was uh, I was getting the kick out of uh, <laughs> having you do the the uh, E3 presentation style speeches throughout different episodes. Oh yeah, <laughs> some some joke about that on one of the blooper reels, I think somewhere. <laughs> um, Get all that copy under under two minutes and <laughs> whatever. So yes, <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. No, I can't. We literally can't. <laughs> He's a very gifted speaker. Clearly, so is Kinder Spirit, as she's as she is a vo- uh, has some voiceover talent in the context of the show. Michelle, do you do you have any other than basically getting to play yourself as a bubbly happy? Yeah, woman? that was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I I only saw the first three episodes of this, but um, yeah, I want to like see the end of it and how everything comes to fruition, you know, at the end because now that we've watched episode zero, it's like oh okay, so this is how everything happens. And then um, I think the main character gets corrupted, right? Yes. I think towards yes. the end. Yes. And I want to see how that happens because like. <laughs> Like in anime, too, it's so funny. Like, it starts out like, oh, happy and fun, fun. And my favorite character, I love Nylock. He's, I love Martin. He's of hilarious. Of course, yeah. No, who doesn't? <laughs> he's, he's awesome. So it starts out like fun and happy, but then it gets kind of like really dark at the end. And showing episode zero at the end is like, oh, whoa, this is like really dark and stuff. I, actually, so, even with you for like as, as bubbly and happy as your character <laughs> was, uh, I actually liked when she got to be very like, you know, her kind of motherly attachment to Softy yeah. and like. When she'd kind of go off on some of the other net kings about what they were doing and everything, but uh, yeah, she's like the only one. She's like, no, don't put her in the government. And they're like, sorry, we're gonna call the government. <laughs> like, no, I am government man sent from the government to take to take computer program. <laughs> I, um, I like his animation. You have the little glasses. He looks like the Smiths or something from the Matrix. You yes, know? <laughs> that that character uh, may or may not be in a future episode. <laughs> Voiced by another person in this episode. Hmm, you'll have to piece that one together, listeners. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, <laughs> well, we're at the end here, but uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Hope you all out there listening thank you. enjoyed and liked this episode too. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you all next time. Maybe at Woo-hoo! an anime convention or something really soon. Much love, <laughs> Tomaniacs. Woo!